Hello and welcome back to the Toronto Website Developer.com. I am P.U. Worski, the Toronto Website Developer specializing in Drupal. And in the fourth video tutorial of this 10-part video tutorial series on object-oriented PHP, I want to introduce you to abstract classes as well as exceptions. But before we do that, you'll notice I'm over at my website, torontowebsitedeveloper.com slash store. Here you can purchase my video tutorial series as I develop them. I do have a few outstanding that I've got to get online, but until then, um, each purchase of these goes towards helping me to continue to develop these tutorials, keep them free and keep them frequent. So I greatly appreciate all the support thus far. Alternatively, if you can't afford the $20, but do want to help out, please just give this tutorial a thumbs up or leave a comment on YouTube. Both are greatly appreciated as they help to promote these tutorials to others. Now, with all that said, why don't we head back over to localhost slash OOP slash tutorial four. Here I'm at user object uh, PHP. It's a new file. And we're going to continue off where we were last time. So in tutorial three, we looked at the concept of pets and having a pet and then a dog, and I believe it was a cat, and, and being able to instantiate those. And the dog would extend from pet and the class would extend, or the cat would extend from pet. Now, with that, the next logical step is the idea of an abstract class. What this is essentially is the, uh, it would be the top of your hierarchy in kind of that class pyramid. So taking our example from the last tutorial, if we looked at pet, pet actually resides at the top where you have a pet and then you can have a cat and you can have a dog. But you don't really want to instantiate the pet in your program because you need to either have a cat or a dog. You can't just have a pet. So that's where abstract classes come in. Essentially what they do is they force you as a programmer to choose what you are going to create off of that abstract class. You can't instantiate and use the abstract class. You have to extend it and then use that new class that extends the abstract class. Now, I know it could be confusing talking about all this, so why don't we jump into our example. You'll see I'm over at user object uh, PHP here. I've got my Vim editor. And so this is the same file that we've been using consistently. You'll notice I'm requiring a couple of files here. And then what I'm doing is I'm just instantiating a new user, passing in a username and password, and then calling a couple of methods. So looking at that class, it's nothing fancy. It's really just class, username, couple of protected attributes, um, parameters rather, and then a constructor as well as setters and, and getters. And so when I actually call this file, you'll see I've got uh, Peter, my username, and then one, two, three, four, five, six, seven as my password. Now, if I was building out a site, um, perhaps I'd want to have different types of users. So I might want to have an admin user. I might want to have an authenticated user. And so each one of those different types of users would share functionality. They would all be a type of a user. So they would all have a username. They would all have a password, uh, perhaps login information, a whole bunch of other stuff that I haven't included. But the idea is they inherit from that original class, that original user. So rather than take a whole bunch of functionality and write it into admin and authenticated, just like we talked about last time, I would have this parent class that I can use. But I don't want anybody that's going to be developing with me to actually instantiate that class, that user, because you can't use the user, you need to use a specific type of user. And so the way that I create that contract and I make sure that people can't do that is by adding this word abstract. So now I have abstract class user. And you'll see if I go back here and I reload my page, I'm going to get a fatal error that says you can't instantiate an abstract class. And it's going to tell me exactly where I'm doing it. And so here on user object, what I need to do is comment out these lines. And then down here at the bottom, I'm just going to go ahead and take all my comments out save that and now what I'm doing is I'm saying give me a new admin and I'm passing in the username password and then an integer which we're going to talk about and then I'm calling some methods and then give me a new authenticated uh, same thing I'm passing in a username and a password here and so if we look at the admin class you'll see it's extending user and this is exactly the same as what we did last time there's no change there it's the same syntax we just extend and then same thing on the authenticated. I've got my authenticated class and I just extend. And then I've got some additional functionality that's specific to the authenticated user and additional functionality that's specific to the admin user. And so if I reload my page now, you'll see that I get my proper page. Uh, you can see this is related to the admin. Admin has created seven articles. 
Um, and that's because in my functionality, what I've gone ahead and done is defined the fact that admins can create articles. So that's what that third integer was. Um, and users can read articles. So, so that's how you implement an abstract class. The benefit of the abstract class, again, is that you take this functionality that is common to different types of objects and you put it into a parent class. However, that parent class has a contract associated with it saying that you can't instantiate it by itself. You have to extend it and then use the children. Um, again, the reason why you want to do that is because an object-oriented PHP as with all programming, you don't want to repeat yourself. This allows you to do that uh, when you're working with objects. You take that, that common functionality rather than rewriting it a hundred times, put it into a parent class, and then use that parent class. The catch with extending, as I think we mentioned in the third tutorial, uh, is you can only extend once, right? So I'm extending user. I can't then extend another abstract class and another abstract class. You can only go up the hierarchy one at a time. So uh, so this is it. All I can do is extend uh, user. And so that's very important to keep in mind as you're programming because there will be times when you want to pull stuff from another class. Um, interestingly, you can do that with what's called traits in PHP. And that's something we might cover off later on down the line uh, because they can get a bit tricky as well. But uh, the other alternative is, is interfaces, which we'll look at in tutorial five. So enough of kind of me blabbing at you. Let's also take a look at here, uh, this whole idea of error throwing. So in my user, what you'll see here is as I'm constructing, um, I'm checking to see if I have an empty username and an empty password. And if I do, I wanna throw an exception. Uh, exceptions are, are very common in object-oriented PHP. And if you use Java or anything like that, you'll be familiar with them because they're thrown all the time. Um, what you, what this, allows us to do is say, hey, something went wrong, and then a different part of our application can catch that and then react to it. So it's, it's what's called throwing try catch, right? So here, if there's an error, I'm gonna throw this, this object, which is an exception. And so the, the, the word throw here is actually a method, and I'm creating a new object, a new exception. And when I create that, the constructor for exception wants a string. And so that's what I'm doing here. You can actually check this out at the PHP exception manual. And you'll see that uh, it's a type of class. Uh, it's a base class for PHP. So you can also extend this and create your own exceptions, which we're not going to do. It's beyond the scope of this. Um, but really, I've created this exception. And so when I go to try to create that user, I need to take that into account. And so I'm gonna wipe out these comments and I'm gonna change our class back from abstract so that we can actually try this out. And I know I could have just done this a lot easier by having the example classes and auth admin do this, but that's okay. So here, if I reload my page, you'll see I get this message, oops, something went wrong. And that's because in my user object, I said, try to create this user. And if you fail, you're going to catch um, an exception. And exception is the most broad based type of exception you can catch. If you're actually doing this and programming this yourself, you wanna to try to be as specific as possible to make sure you're reacting to the proper exception. So uh, in this example, we might've created our own and then caught that specifically, the type of exception we were throwing. But anyways, I'm telling it, Give me the exception and uh, put it into the variable dollar sign e. And so if I'm in debug mode, I'm going to call the method get message on that exception, which will print out what I added here as the string. Um, alternatively, if I'm not in debug mode, just say, oops, something went wrong. So you'll see I'm not in debug mode here. So if I put myself into debug mode, reload my page, you'll see I get my, my string. You must provide a username and a password. Um, and so that's that's try catch uh, and throwing. Uh, you'll see that quite a bit in object oriented PHP. Um, specifically, that you know, as something goes wrong, you're going to throw, and then your documentation will typically say, you know, you throw something. And so I'm throwing an exception. But this, if I had created my own, could be, you know, um, I don't know, um, invalid user or something like that. And I would throw a new invalid user 
Um, but I would have to define that in, in somewhere. I would have to have a class that would be an uh, invalid user class, and then I would throw that, and I would catch that and use that. Um, so that's it for this video tutorial. Um, I wanted to try to keep it short and sweet. The idea of abstract classes, you have something that has all this abstract functionality that you want children to have, and so you create that as kind of a parent. Um, it's what's referred to as an is a relationship, and so you want to make sure that that's true not a has relationship. So uh, I don't even know a good example of that would be, I don't know, cars have an engine, but I don't know. Um, cars can have, I don't know, cars can have doors or something like that. So doors don't extend from cars. Um, bad example, I know. But anyways, that's the whole idea. In the next video tutorial, we'll take a look at um, interfaces, which are similar to abstract classes. Um, and hopefully this video tutorial helped you. If it did, leave a comment, leave me a thumbs up, let me know. And hopefully we'll see you for tutorial five. Thanks very much for watching.